sanctifier of the faithful. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Janine Gordon, Youth Representative of the Vestry and President of the Youth Group at St. George's Episcopal Church, Hempstead, New York. On behalf of the Rector, Wardens, Vestry, and Parishioners, I welcome you to a video presentation of our historic church, its ministry and mission. I prepared this video in 2016 for my Girl Scout Gold Award project. St. George's Episcopal Church, situated on Front Street in Hempstead, across from the Town Hall, is among Long Island's earliest Episcopal, originally Anglican congregations. Hempstead was settled in 1643. Chief Takapusha and others conveyed to Reverend Robert Fordham and John Carmen as agents for the settlers, all of the land which now comprises the town of Hempstead. In 1648, the primarily Dutch settlers to Hempstead erected a meeting house in which divine, non-denominational services could be conducted and any other community issues could be discussed. In March 1665, Richard Nichols, the first colonial governor of New York province, convened the first ever representative assembly in the province in Hempstead to enact legislation, the Duke Laws, which provided for the establishment of a place for public worship. In 1673, the meeting house in Hempstead was replaced by a second one, erected at public cost. The first parsonage, a home for the rector, was built in 1682. In 1692, Benjamin Fletcher became the colonial governor of New York. He helped to enact the New York Ministry Act of 1693, which marks the beginning of the Church of England as the established church of the province of New York and defined the boundaries for Anglican Church in Hempstead and other places within the province. Missionaries sent by the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts in England, including the Reverends George Keith and William Vesey, are credited with establishing St. George's Parish in Hempstead in the summer of 1702. In 1704, the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in Foreign Parts appointed the Reverend John Thomas of England to serve as the first rector of St. George's Church. In 1706, Queen Anne of England made a gift to the parish of a Bible, prayer book, and silver chalice and patent for communion. These gifts are still in existence and well preserved. They were briefly captured by pirates, but were recovered on the Caribbean island of Jamaica and returned. The parish also received the gift of a baptismal font from England. Land adjacent to the meeting house was used for burial plots. The oldest marked grave bears the date 1727. The third church building was erected in 1734 and consecrated on April 23, 1735, which has been appointed as St. George's Day. George was born in Turkey around 200 AD and died on April 23, 303 AD. He became the patron saint of England by declaration of King Edward II in 1347. He is remembered as a martyr, having given his life in witness to the gospel during the persecution of the church in the early 4th century. Legend has it that George slew a dragon that had been terrorizing the people of Libya and had demanded the sacrifice of the young daughter of the king of Egypt. Also, in 1735, title to the church, parsonage, and glebe land was transferred to St. George's Church by a vote of the town of Hempstead and the parish received a silver baptism bowl made by Simeon Solme. In addition, in 1735, King George II of England granted a royal patent and charter to the parish. 
The patent and charter still govern the parish today. Samuel Seabury, the first American Episcopal bishop and the second presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church of the United States of America, spent some of his childhood in Hempstead. His father served as the third rector of the St. George's Parish from 1742 to 1764. The Golden Cock Withervane was installed on the steeple of St. George's Church more than 250 years ago. From 1775 till 1782, the church was occupied by the Continental Army. The story goes that during the Revolutionary War, Continental soldiers used the weather vane as target practice. In fact, the weather vane bears multiple bullet holes. The present parsonage or rectory was rebuilt in 1793 by the voluntary contribution of parishioners. It is a charming old house with a garden and sprawling lawn surrounded by a picket fence. Many of its rooms have fireplaces. The present church building was constructed in 1822, consecrated in 1823, extended in 1856, and remodeled in 1893. The building is one of the purest examples of Georgian architecture in America. Adorning the building are stained glass windows designed by Tiffany Studios. The padded pew boxes are said to have once been reserved by families to occupy during worship services. The clock in St. George's Tower was made by Sherry and Brian of Sag Harbor, Long Island, and purchased by the parish in 1852. This clock is older than Big Ben in London, England. The church's organ was built by Paragallo Pipe Organ Company and has been consistently maintained by that company. A parish house with offices, classrooms, and multi-purpose rooms was added in 1905, one year after the parish's 200th anniversary. A small parish hall was added in 1949. Both the church and rectory are listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. Historical tablets in the sanctuary highlight significant events in the history of the parish and list directors of the parish from 1704 to the present. In addition, two former rectors have written books on the history of the parish. In 1881, Reverend William N. Moore wrote The History of St. George's Church, Hempstead, Long Island, and in 1932, Reverend Sylvanus Height wrote Adventures for God, a history of St. George's Episcopal Church, Hempstead, Long Island. The Friends of Historic St. George's Church, a not-for-profit, non-sectarian organization, was founded to encourage and assist St. George's Church in the preservation of the parish's buildings and grounds, and to publicize the church as a historic landmark. Recently, the roof of the rectory was replaced. In 2014, the exterior of the rectory was completely renovated. In its early years, St. George's Church was a place of worship for most of the Episcopalians in what is now Nassau County, and the congregation was made up of mostly Dutch and English settlers and their descendants. Later, St. George's Church helped found churches in Huntington and Oyster Bay. Until 1876, when the Cathedral of the Incarnation was built in Garden City, St. George's Church was a major Episcopal center. John Henry Hobart, the third Bishop of New York, was a rector of St. George's Church. In 1902, St. John's Episcopal Church was founded a few blocks away in Hempstead to accommodate Black Episcopalians. In 1927, the parish celebrated its 225th anniversary with a service on the morning of St. George's Day, April 23rd, during which the Right Reverend Henry Codman Potter, the Bishop of New York, and other clergy spoke. In 1952, 
special services and events were held to commemorate the 250th anniversary of the parish. The 250th anniversary book offers great insight to the life of the parish during that period. With the demographic changes in southwestern Nassau during the 1970s, today, 95% of the members of St. George's Church are Black, and most are from the Caribbean. The current rector, the very Reverend P. Alistair Rollins, was born on the island of Nevis and is St. George's first Black rector. St. George's is once again the only Episcopal church in Hempstead. St. John's relocated to Limbrook in 2015. St. George's Church Hempstead is affectionately referred to as an old church with a young spirit. Through the years, it has borne witness to the faith in the triune God and has sustained its mission of ministry and service. The vestry, which consists of the rector, two wardens, six vestry persons, and two youth representatives serve as agents and legal representatives of the parish in all matters concerning the parish's corporate property and the relations of the parish to its clergy. Committees of the vestry, including the buildings and properties, the finance and investments, the education, the entertainment, and the stewardship committees perform various functions to promote the mission of the parish. The Education Committee oversees scholarship awards from the parish and several families in the parish that have established scholarship funds to college-bound graduating high school seniors in the parish. The committee also oversees competitive scholarship awards to college-bound graduating high school seniors from Hempstead and Uniondale High Schools. The Entertainment Committee hosts many events that celebrate the culture and history of the parish. During an annual celebration in April, to commemorate the parish's anniversary, the committee recognizes parishioners who are 80 years and older. Christian education is an important part of the parish's ministry. Baptisms are done regularly throughout the year. Weekly Sunday school classes offer the youth in the parish an opportunity for spiritual growth. Parishioners may also attend regularly scheduled classes to prepare for First Holy Communion and Confirmation, a mature affirmation of one's baptismal covenant. The prayer and Bible study group meets weekly, and the Vacation Bible School runs during school recesses. The ushers and ambassadors are usually the first people one encounters when one arrives for worship service. They greet worshipers at the door, often escort them to their seats, and tend to them during worship. They also ensure that first-time worshipers feel welcome and comfortable. The music ministry at St. George's Church plays an integral part during worship services and other events. The choir, accompanied by the organist, supports and enhances the congregation in singing worship songs. Over the years, other music ministries have graced the parish. They include a youth choir, handbell choir, and steel bands, which was formed in 2003 through the generous donation of a former parishioner. The altar ministry also plays an important role in the worship service. The altar guild prepares the sanctuary, altar, priest vestments, hangings, vessels, and elements for service and worship. The Eucharistic ministers, acolytes, lectors, and intercessors assist the rector during the service. Other organizations within the parish focus on enriching the lives of specific groups. The Brotherhood of St. Andrew, the oldest evangelistic ministry of the Episcopal Church, is dedicated to the spread of Christ's kingdom among men and boys through regular prayer, study, and outreach. The Guild of the Christ Child serves to support families with infants and children. The purpose of the Episcopal Church woman is to unite women in a program of worship, study, and fellowship, which will deepen and strengthen their spiritual lives and lead them into service in the church, the community, and the world. The youth and young adult groups empower the younger parishioners for ministry and leadership. The parish's outreach ministries help to address the concerns and conditions of the members of the congregation and community. The nursing home ministry offers worship services at three nursing homes every month. The food pantry provides groceries and clothing to needy families 
in the community. The parish also has a thriving scouting program in which Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, and Girl Scouts gain invaluable leadership skills while serving God and their community. Most of the Cub Scouts advance to become Boy Scouts, and many of the Boy Scouts go on to achieve the rank of Eagle. The Boy Scouts go on regular camping trips. They have even gone camping in Puerto Rico and St. Croix in the United States Virgin Islands. The Girl Scout troop engages in various activities that benefit the parish and the community. In 2013, the Girl Scouts completely renovated the church shop. In 2015, the troop hosted a complimentary Thanksgiving feast for the community and fed approximately 130 people. The troop plans to make this an annual event. The Girl Scouts also maintain a garden in the front churchyard where they plant tulip bulbs that bloom in the spring and annuals that beautify the churchyard during the summer. St. George's Episcopal Church welcomes you to join us as we strive to carry out Christ's mission in the world by being active participants in the Jesus Movement. Oh,